Hello everyone, I'm Jay from TechForce and today we are talking about how do you pass Cyber Essentials certification and Cyber Essentials Plus certification as well. Well, in order to uh, get the Cyber Essentials Plus certification, you would have to pass the Cyber Essentials self-assessment, right? But lately we have been getting loads of inquiries on Cyber Essentials and helping and passing. Uh, the reason being um, increased cyber attacks as well as there is increased scrutiny around supply chain. If you're working with uh, any pub public sector government uh, uh, organizations and they're asking for cyber essentials, right? So how do you actually pass the certification? So we at TechForce have made a nice checklist which was downloaded by hundreds of uh, organizations over the last few years. So we have updated this checklist for 2023. I will leave a link below in the description as well. But for now, I will uh, walk you through this checklist. This is a high level overview of, you know, different controls involved in Cyber Essentials, right? But if you would like an in-depth overview, please do like and subscribe to this channel and we'll be posting uh, more and more videos all around Cyber Essentials. So here in this um, Cyber Essentials basically is, uh, does consist of five different security controls you have to have in place. This is same for self-assessment and the plus. Self-assessment itself, you know, um, as the name itself suggests, it is a self-assessment. You will get a questionnaire on a IASME portal where you would answer all the questions and then you would submit. There is no verification involved. Whereas in plus, there is a assessment, an audit involved um, which checks whatever the answers you provided. Uh, we will collect the verification um, and issue the Cyber Essentials Plus certification, right? So that's the difference. So let's go through the five different controls we have in place for Cyber Essentials. First one is firewalls. Firewalls, what we are looking for here is we are a certification body. Right? That's why I'm saying what we are looking for. So your default passwords are changed. Default passwords which came with the firewalls when you purchased, they have to be changed unnecessary ports are closed. Any ports that open for a purpose, and once you're done with that purpose, then closed, right? And usually, you know, we, we forget. And also, if you have a documentation around opening process for opening and closing ports, which would help a lot. Um, yeah, that's what that's the next thing. Port opening uh, process is documented. IP allow list for any remote access. So if you have enabled remote access on your firewalls. This is your network perimeter firewalls. If you have them enabled and you you should be looking at restricting to certain IP addresses. For example, if you have an IT guy accessing the firewall from home, then it should be restricted to his home IP address only. Nobody on the internet should be able to access your firewall, right? And also uh, multi-factor authentication enabled on the firewall login, right? Unauthenticated inbound traffic is blocked. Make sure you're, you're blocking any unauthenticated traffic coming in. So that's what I meant again. Um, remove unnecessary firewall rules. So if you have created a firewall rule to redirect any, any, uh, any services you're hosting or redirect a remote desktop connection or something like that, and once you're done with the purpose, make sure that it is, you know, um, removed, right? Unnecessary firewall rules. Second one, uh, secure configuration, where we are looking at changing default login credentials for all the network devices, not just the firewalls and routers. Um, and there is something changing in, in this section for 2023, which is coming in April, but I will discuss that in a separate video. Remove any unnecessary software across the devices on your network. So usually when you purchase uh, laptops um, or desktops, it comes with loads of bloat bloatware or if users or admin have installed some software, once you're done with it, then maybe you should look at, you know, removing it unless uh, you need it. If you need it, make sure it is kept up to date and properly licensed for business use, right? And disable unused user accounts. If somebody has left the company or somebody has um, you know hasn't logged in for a while or you created a login for one of your suppliers uh, a scanning company or any you know any supplier who needs access temporary access but once they are done 
you may have um, not a disable their account so disable their accounts enforce strong password policy and NCSC has a password uh, guidance for all the companies you know at least 12 characters minimum for password if you have eight characters make sure um, you know the, the multi-factor authentication is enabled and also multi-factor authentication is coming in enforced it will be enforced from April all across the uh, users as well it is already uh, mandatory for admins uh, but it will be mandatory for users as well from April 2023 right um, but educate your users about how to create the strong passwords and multi-factor and whatnot. So NCSE has a great guidance. Hopefully I will leave the link in the description. Disable auto run feature, which any software um, uh, that could, you know, anything that could uh, execute a malicious uh, code on your systems. So make sure you disable auto run features. Uh, set up device locking policy. So if, um, if a user is, you know, some a user is logging into a device and they have unsuccessfully, they, they entered the wrong password, make sure you have some sort of mechanism for uh, locking it automatically, like automatically log, uh, lock, lock the device after 10 unsuccessful un, um, login attempts or something like that. Security, so third one, security update management. It used to be called patch management, but that is now security update management. Automatic updates enabled where possible, right? Earlier, auto run feature disabled, but automatic updates for software and applications you're using on your network. Make sure auto, auto updates are enabled. All operating systems sh must be up to date and um, no unsupported or unlicensed software exists on your network. Software po properly licensed for business, as I mentioned earlier, Mobile devices, software, either you're using iOS or Android devices, make sure they are all up to date, right? And uh, if you are using, um, let's say Windows 7, so you have a bespoke software in your company, it usually happens in manufacturing businesses, they have some really old software, they can't get rid of, they need it for business, but it doesn't work with the Windows 10, Windows 11. So they may need Windows XP, Windows 7 to run it. If you are using one of those devices, make sure the, that device is isolated, segregated from the rest of the network and it doesn't have direct internet access. Um, if, you, it, if it has direct internet access, that's a straight fail in the cyber essentials. User access controls is the fourth section. Have a policy for joiners and leavers. How do you create the accounts and how do you set the permissions, privileges? For the new users and what do you do when the people leave the company as i said earlier you need, you need to be able to disable their accounts and um, you know do the rest have a policy for setting permissions again same thing separate accounts for admin tasks you know make sure you have separate accounts for admin um, tasks and the user tasks so normal users should be regularly be using the normal user account where they don't have permissions to install software if they need to install software they need admin admin account either you know in medium companies they have it department which logs in and does install the software but small businesses you could have a separate admin account when the user needs to install they can log into admin account or provide the admin credentials and install the software right um apply multi-factor authentication to all cloud services, whether it is um, platform as a service, uh, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, the user access controls fall within your remit, business remit, uh, not the provider's remit. So you would have to configure uh, multi-factor authentication. And we came across um, a situation where a customer said, oh, we have really legacy old software. It doesn't support multi-factor authentication. Um, then you would have to put other controls in place to protect um, that. And also, there are there could be some cloud services if they don't offer uh, multi-factor authentication, you could integrate with um, your Office 365 logins or Google, and then um, you log in with Google, and Google off offers multi-factor authentication, right? For example, I could say, hypothetically, right? Let's say HubSpot, a CRM software, it does offer multi-factor authentication, but let's say for the sake of this example, it doesn't. And then you could, um, you know, um, 
enable single sign-on with Google. So you log in with Google um, for uh, HubSpot, but you can enable multi-factor authentication on Google. So hopefully that serves the purpose, right? Encourage users to use strong and unique passwords. Again, I said um, you need to um, educate your users. Brute, for protect, brute force protection, um, you know, if somebody is trying to log in unsuccessful attempts after five or 10 logins, make sure the device locks out. Review your admin uh, accounts um, regularly. So if you made somebody admin for a specific task or specific project, make sure their admin permissions are removed after you finish the project. And also, yeah, remove any of those admin, uh, re review any of those admin accounts regularly, right? Last but not least, five, fifth one is the malware protection. Malware protection, make sure an antivirus software is installed on all your hosts across the network and make sure it is up to date with the vendor recommendations and um, it makes sure it prevents any malware running on your network prevent any connections to malicious websites on the internet and application allow list means um, you have a whitelist for all your applications and any other application needs to be approved first to be installed on the network right hopefully that serves the purpose uh, as i said please um, do download this i will leave a link in the description below and also we have loads of content on the website and please do like and subscribe to this video and if you are looking for cyber essential certification, we are an IASME, uh, you know, IASME certified cyber essential certification body. There are so many certification words <laughs> um, and we can do the certification for you, right? This checklist is same for cyber essentials and cyber essentials plus certification. Thank you very much.